have the mayor on the phone. Very thorough reporting there. Mayor Jack Seiler is the mayor of Fort Lauderdale, and he has been kind enough to stand by while we got that information from Miami Dade. First of all, Mayor, how did you and your family make out during the storm? Well, we, we did fine. We're, you know, we're. We're all alive and healthy, and that's the most important thing. And that's what I remind everybody out there: if you're alive and healthy, that's that's the good thing because we can replace other things, but we can't replace obviously our good health and our lives. So, um, you know, we're, we're fortunate about. Glad to hear that, sir. Uh, let's talk about Fort Lauderdale for a moment. We know that there are so many people who have lost power in Broward County. Uh, of course, Fort Lauderdale is the most populous area in Broward County. Uh, what can you tell us about how Fort Lauderdale has fared? I tell you, we have a lot, a lot of people are without power, but people uh, need to stay off the roads. They need to not worry about these assessments. We're doing them, but everywhere I've been, uh, we have seen power lines down, trees down. Uh, the beach has come up on A1A. Three cars were stuck on A1A. So people need to stay inside, obey this curfew, and let us complete the assessment because it's a lot worse than I expected. Uh, can, can you reiterate the curfew for us, just for anyone who might be listening who, who doesn't know about the curfew or who needs to be reminded of, of the time and how long that's going to be going? Well, the curfew for now is, is through 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, but I suspect that'll be extended further. Um, as I, you know, we originally said 10 a.m. Monday morning, thinking that that would be sufficient for us to recover, but now that's going to be uh, well past that, I believe. I think people need to just kind of ride it out inside, let us. You know, address the issues. I, I'm, I was surprised tonight. I was riding in a, obviously an EOC vehicle, and there were hazards in the road that would have caused damage to normal cars. What did you see? You said that it's worse than you expected. What are you talking about specifically? Um, Rick, I saw uh, hundreds of trees down, trees blocking roads, signs down, a, a roof, a roof pulled off. We had a crane in Fort Lauderdale that came down over on the beach. Um, power lines down, cable lines, telephone lines. We actually had to move aside a, a large street and an entrance into a community. So you're, you're looking at a a lot more damage. I'm right now on Commercial Boulevard, and there are lanes blocked by trees. Not all of them, but again, if you're driving and you don't know about this, you, you could drive right into a, a, a tree. And so I was really, you know, I, I kept saying how fortunate we were we missed the brunt of this storm, but we got enough of it that we're going to be feeling it for a few few weeks. How about flooding? I know flooding was a concern. Have you come across that? We have. Downtown Fort Lauderdale had some uh, flooding uh, issues. We're all closely monitoring the midnight high tide. It's coming up in just about uh, an hour and a half. But we had flooding on um, Los Olas, had flooding on uh, parts of, um, you know, A1A and the you know, other pockets down Harbor Beach and that, and we've been driving around. And again, as I remind people, don't walk into this flood, these floodwaters, don't wander in. If there's a live wire that's falling and it's crossing it, hazard. And so, uh, you know, we, everywhere we went, we we had the protection with us before we did anything. We checked the wall. Mr. Mayor, we've been focusing on some of the construction cranes that have malfunctioned uh, down in Miami-Dade County, but there are certainly an awful lot of them up in Fort Lauderdale and Broward County in general as well. Uh, have you been able to survey uh, any of the construction cranes, uh, and, and can you tell us how they, how they fared? Well, as I said, there, we have one crane that definitely uh, collapsed on itself, not on, not on any, any other property, but... We had one that collapsed that I personally observed a little few hours ago. Uh, the rest of this, you know, we've been doing this this assessment in the dark, so we use spotlights. So I've only seen the one crane that created a problem. The other construction site seem okay, uh, but as I'm driving now on power line, I mean, the roads flooded all the way across here. So there's just there's a lot of hazards out there, and you know, Rick Rudabay, tell your listeners and your viewers, stay off the road, obey the curfew, be safe. We can certainly hammer home that point. Can you give us um, an update on the shelters? I know there had to be more shelters open, more people had to evacuate than you anticipated. A lot of those were in schools. Um, has, has everyone left the shelters at this point? No, no one is going to be leaving the shelters at all because of the curfew. We're going to not, you know, we're encouraging people to stay another night in the shelters um, and then return, as soon as we lift the curfew, return home. But right now, to send people out, uh, from the shelters in these conditions. And again, we, we were fortunate. We're not even getting what the Southwest Florida got, but you cannot have people driving on the road 
You cannot have people, you know, walk in their neighborhoods. Uh, I literally myself saw dozens and dozens of down lines, not being fully aware which ones were, you know, hot, which ones were live. You know, so I would encourage people if you've sheltered somewhere, whether that's the our shelters or whether it's with family and friends, ride the night out, get a good idea in the morning what we're doing, and we'll go from there because. Right now, to even be out in the darkness and not sure, you know, what tree is blocking the road or what power line is down or what puddle contains certain hazards, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to talk to you about the power lines and, and about the power outages specifically. Uh, we were on the line with FPL earlier tonight, uh, and we heard about the number of people in Broward County that are without power. I'm sure that you and your office have been in touch with FPL as well. What kind of assessment have they given you? What kind of a timeline have they given you in terms of when they'll be able to restore power in Fort Lauderdale? Well, we haven't gotten that, those, those answers yet, but you're right. I, I was stunned that with tropical force winds and, and some category one winds that we have these these many you know properties out my house went out um, other houses in our neighborhood went out and then all of a sudden I'm driving around the city and I'd say 75 percent of the city is dark and so um, we need to evaluate why that happened especially in light of the fact that you know we dodged the, the, the big bullet I mean that, that big bad storm came up the other coast certainly we've we had a substantial effects from it. I can't imagine if there'd be any power on if that storm had come head on into Fort Lauderdale or Miami. What about city services? We were just getting an update from Miami-Dade about essential workers, workers that might be involved in, in the cleanup efforts there. Uh, what are you doing in terms of, of harnessing all of the employees of the city of Fort Lauderdale in terms of helping get the city back on its feet? Well, we, all our employees have been working through this storm and have done a, a, a remarkable job. And I will say this to all those workers out there, whether you're public safety, whether you're public works, the city employees and the county employees have done a remarkable job and they will do extraordinary work going forward. But from our standpoint, they're all 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Everybody's getting to work. We're, we're going to have to get crews out uh, to clear the debris. They obviously crews out to address these power line issues. Uh, a lot of the residential neighborhoods in, in Fort Lauderdale, um, you know, like I said, streets are blocked. And so we're going to have to do a lot of, of work to just allow the people to get to work and to allow our citizens and our neighbors to get back to their normal lifestyle. So our workers are going to be starting first thing in the morning. A bunch of them are here with me tonight at the Emergency Operations Center. We've been out here and we're actually doing assessments. Uh, figure out where we need to go, but the city staff at Fort Lauderdale, I cannot be more complimentary how responsive they have been and how responsible they've been. That's great. Mayor, uh, really quickly before we let you go, I'm just wondering if there were any surprise challenges. I know the city was very prepared. We saw this coming, but were there any challenges that you didn't anticipate that you now are dealing with? No, I, I think most people, and again, I, I credit the media, you all, you know, people, uh, didn't take this storm that seriously at first, but you all hammered home the point. This is a big, bad, broad storm. It was immense. It was intense. And the fact is, I think people started to listen to Rick and Rudabay and say, you know what? We need to pay attention. We need to heed these warnings. And it's one of the reasons I'm emphasizing tonight to please spread that news about stay inside, don't come out, because they are now listening to you because they understand this was everything it was talked about and more, and we didn't get the brunt of it. And I can't imagine what the rest of the state's going to look like, but I just, I'm thankful that our neighbors and our citizens listened to the media and listened to our uh, directives and orders and complied with the curfew. And, and thankfully, we've all got our health. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate you uh, talking to us. Mayor Jack Seiler, the mayor of Fort Lauderdale, uh, my mayor, I'm um, happy to say. Uh, and good luck uh, as the sun comes up. We'll check back with you tomorrow to see how things look uh, once you're able to get a better, a better look at things there on the ground in Fort Lauderdale. Mayor Seiler, thanks again. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rudabay.